What is up? Good mic work. Back at you. I told you I'd be up here if I could. Surprise commentary for you. Just a quick one here on Wednesday night. I wanted to come up and talk about a couple of things. We are right on the heels of the WWE draft coming up at the beginning of the week next week. And tonight was a big night in wrestling, too, because we had a huge main event on NXT, Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura, and the Cruiserweight Classic kicked off as well. So I wanted to come up here and just talk about a few things as it relates to those shows and give you a preview of what to expect next week, because there is a lot going on with the Raw WWE title match, the draft on Tuesday on the first live SmackDown, and then we have Battleground that Sunday. So there's a whole bunch of shit going on, and I'm going to be up here a lot. So my plan, as I mentioned in my last commentary, is to be up here both nights after Monday Night Raw because we have a huge WWE title match and also after SmackDown after the WWE draft. Right now, I am scheduled to be home and live tweeting for Raw. SmackDown is up in the air. I might have to catch the first live SmackDown in the entire draft on a replay, which is going to suck. But I'm going to do my best to be home and live tweet my reaction during the show and get a commentary up as quickly as possible. If not, I'll come home, I'll watch the show late, and get a commentary up extremely late on Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning. I'm also going to have to throw in my Battleground predictions in there somewhere as well. I'm guessing that will come on the SmackDown review because I'd rather wait till after the draft before I pick these matches because once we know where everybody is going and where everybody is going to be playing, Place, it might be a lot easier to predict the outcomes. So that's what you can expect next week. I'm going to get into a few more channel items here in just a little bit. But first of all, I just want to have a few quick comments on the NXT show from tonight, a one-match show. Pretty much the entire thing was built around Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura, a fantastic match. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're positioning, or they might have even announced Shinsuke Nakamura to challenge Samoa Joe at the next NXT TakeOver show for the NXT title. So it looks like Nakamura might be the next one in line. But him and Finn Balor had an amazing match, and we had a feeling that Nakamura would probably win. I mean, when the hell are they going to bring Finn Balor up to the main roster? You would have to think it's going to have to be between now and SummerSlam, because the draft is happening, and he's going to have to go somewhere. SmackDown with Shane McMahon seems a good place for him. I don't think he'll be drafted. But I think he's got to debut or make some sort of an appearance at some point, either at Battleground or on a Raw or SmackDown leading up to SummerSlam, or maybe even at SummerSlam itself. But given the fact that they're about to split the brands and they need a lot of talent, it seems like there is no time better than right now to bring Finn Balor up to the main roster. So for him to have to drop a couple of matches on his way out to Samoa Joe and to Nakamura is fine. The match was great. These two guys have a ton of history. Great in-ring work, great moves, great psychology, great show of respect at the end with the handshake and everything, and I liked everything I saw. And if that match wasn't good enough, immediately following that, we had the kickoff of the Cruiserweight Classic. I was pleasantly surprised by this show, and I knew it was going to be good. I mean, they've got some amazing wrestlers in this 32-man tournament. I even watched the Bracketology special on the WWE Network with Daniel Bryan and Mauro Ronaldo, and uh, I liked the feel of it. I mean, Corey Graves is involved in that too, and I just like the way it feels like a legitimate sport. They're treating it as one. When you watch that Bracketology special, I thought I was watching SportsCenter. I thought I was watching ESPN. They did a really good job of making it feel legitimate, making it feel like it is true competition, and really it is. I mean, this is a great opportunity for all 32 of these guys who would otherwise maybe not get any better than a dark match or tryout with the WWE. They're involved in this tournament, and even if they lose in the first round, they made it, they got on stage, and they can eventually, you know, get back into the mix one day in the future, and now they've got this great WWE experience under their belt for indie bookings and everything else they do. So really, this is a win-win. And when I saw this show, it amazes me that WWE even does this. I mean, how outside of WWE's comfort zone is this? Could you ever imagine them doing anything like this 10 years ago? I can't. I guess we really have to tip our hats to Triple H. I know he gets most of the credit for this. I know, and I know he's the one that's been spearheading the success of NXT and coming up with ideas like this Cruiserweight Classic. And uh, the whole thing, the, the way the whole thing is put together feels very... Very professional and very legit. The crowd seems to appreciate it. The wrestlers are working their asses off. Daniel Bryan and Mauro Ronaldo are a perfect commentary team for this. And I've got so many great things to say about this tournament and how good it's really going to be. Tonight's show was just one hour. It's going to be weekly. And I guess they're going to try to have four matches per show, at least in the first round. Those will probably be extended to anywhere from two to three matches or maybe even one match in some cases later on in the tournament when uh, these matches go longer. But tonight, the four matches they had were amazing. Just to run through them, the first one might have even been my favorite. I really liked uh, Grand Metallic representing Mexico, taking on Alejandro 
Saez from Chile. Not really familiar with a lot of guys in this tournament. I'm familiar with a few, but for the most part, I don't know who a lot of these guys are, but this first match was fantastic. I like the little pieces they do on each wrestler before they go out, kind of educating on everybody on who these guys are and what their history is. And uh, it's just, I can't say enough good things about how well I think this is all put together. So that first match was fantastic. And I don't know if this was live. I think it was. Uh, They might be on a tape delay or something because the finish of that first match, Grand Metallic got his mask taken off. He, uh, the mask came completely off of his head during that finisher and it almost looked when the camera cut away and came back to him, he had it right back on. So I had a feeling they might have done a, a quick edit or something there if this was live. I'm really unaware of how the schedule all goes down at full sale. I think maybe tonight's NXT show was maybe live and then they taped three or four shows after that. Cruiserweight Classic I think was supposed to be live, but I don't even know if it is. So you guys can inform me or educate me on that because I don't know. But I was really impressed with the first match to say the least. I like the second one as well. Ho-Ho Loon representing China over Arya Davari representing Iran. Now, Davari is the brother of the first Davari that was in the WWE. He was associated with Muhammad Hassan and he managed uh, Great Khali, Kurt Angle, I think even for a time and was a pretty damn good wrestler in his own right and I think has worked in TNA recently. I don't know what he's doing now, but I was always a really big fan of his, so it's cool to see his brother in there, but he fell short in his match and Ho-Ho Loon got the victory in that. Seemed really surprised that he won as well, so uh, all in all, good match there. The third match was Cedric Alexander representing the United States from good old Charlotte North Kakilaki, taking on Clement Pichot from France. I don't even know how to pronounce these guys' names, so please forgive me on how horrible I sound doing so, but this was another pretty good match. These guys are a little bit beefier. They're probably right under that 205 weight limit. Don't know too much about either one of these guys, but the match was good, and Cedric Alexander picked up the win. Final match of the night is finally a guy that I recognize, Kota Ibushi from Japan. We all know him. Probably an early favorite to win this whole thing, taking on Sean Maluda, who is a member of the Samoan family. He's cousins with Roman Reigns and the Usos, and I think his uncle or grandfather is Afa or something like that. So he's been around wrestling his whole life. It's in his blood. He's a guy that I wouldn't be surprised at all to see on WWE TV in the next five years. Nia Jax is even a member of that family, right, if I'm not mistaken. So anytime these guys, anytime anyone in that Samoan bloodline has any sort of talent, the WWE wants to try to make use of them. And I think this kid is no different. He had a good outing today. He was the underdog. He lost, as expected, but I don't think it's the last we have seen of Maluda, that's for sure. So overall, the entire Cruiserweight Classic show was awesome because there's no funny business. There's a handshake before the match. There's no run-ins. There's no 50-50 booking. There's no distraction roll-ups. There's no steel chairs. There's none of that fucking shit. It's just good in-ring one-on-one action, and it's such a nice subdivision of WWE, a place where you can go, like this Cruiserweight Classic or like NXT, where you can just watch really, really good wrestling. And I think this Cruiserweight Classic could be a big deal for years to come, especially if they make this an annual thing. So I'm excited to watch it next week. I mean, I, I tuned in because I have to. I wanted to see what this was all about. I knew you guys were going to want to hear my opinions on it. And as it turns out, I loved the show and I'm going to watch every single one. And I can't wait to see how this thing plays out. So the WWE has found themselves a great little goldmine potentially here with this Cruiserweight Classic because the fans are into it. They love it. They respect it. WWE did not throw this together half-assed. They spent a lot of time scouring the world, finding all the best guys that they could get or that were available, working with other promotions even, which is something that's unheard of. Vince McMahon would never have done that in the past. I know there was some story in recent months of Triple H being at an Evolve taping and shit like that. So, you know, they're out there and they're looking around and they're scouting talent. And it's a good opportunity for everyone in And I think all 32 guys are going to entertain the hell out of us for the next few weeks. I'm excited to see where it goes, and I'm excited to see who wins. Tonight was a really big night for wrestling. Doesn't uh, Lucha Underground air on Wednesdays as well? So we had that going on, I think. I didn't watch that show, and I don't watch enough of that as it is. So one of these days, I will try to get into doing more Lucha Underground stuff and become familiar with that product, because I'm really not at all. But everybody just raves about it. And we also had John Cena hosting the ESPYs tonight. I have not even taken a look at the ESPYs yet. Don't know what happened. Hopefully the club showed up and kicked John Cena's ass, but I don't think that happened either, because you guys would have been tweeting me shit about it. But I do plan on checking out the ESPYs, because I always like that show every year. I did see a tweet or a still image of Craig Sager uh, being honored. And of course, uh, for those of you who know who Craig Sager is, big NBA analyst, works for TNT, does all the courtside interviews, has been doing it for years, and he has terminal cancer and probably does not have that much longer to live. And he's working through the whole thing. So the man's an inspiration, and uh, it's a shame what's happened to him, and he's going to be sorely missed when he does pass on. But for the time being, he's fighting the fight, 
and all the best to him. So I will check out the SPs as soon as I get a chance here to see how John Cena looked. Big gig for him. Talk about publicity. Jesus Christ, for him and the WWE. That's a pretty big deal for him to do that. Also, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the channel and about my commentaries because things are going to change now with the brand extension. WWE threw me a really big curveball. I have been lucky enough in my line of work, and for those of you who always ask, what do I do for a living? I've been in the restaurant business for 24 years, and for the past 20 years, I have pretty much had Monday nights off, which has allowed me to watch Monday Night Raw, so now things are going to change a little bit. I'm still going to be off every Monday night for the most part, not everyone, but probably 45 Mondays per year I will be off, and live tweeting and watching the show, but Tuesdays is a different story. That's going to be hard for me to be off and watch SmackDown every week, so I'm trying to figure out how to handle the commentaries going forward. Now, this is not going to be a problem, at least for the next couple of weeks, because I think for next week, obviously, after Raw and after the draft, and then the week after that, I'll probably come up here and do reviews on both shows, just because there's going to be a lot going on. But when things settle down, I need to come up with a format for my commentaries, and I'm wondering if I should switch my shows to Wednesday. I think it would be nice for everybody if I had a concrete day where I was up here once a week talking about stuff. And if I came up on Wednesdays and talked about both shows, I think that would work out pretty well. I could always wait until Thursdays as well and talk about Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. But judging from the way my schedule normally is, Wednesdays might be better for me. So what I might wind up doing, and by the way, I'm open to suggestions so you guys can let me know. What I probably will wind up doing is I'll be up here live tweeting and watching Raw every Monday night as usual. If major things go down on Raw, if a major story breaks, if uh, something crazy happens, if there's a title change, something like that, I might come up with a short video, five to ten minutes discussing that. And then on Wednesday, I'll talk more in detail about Raw as well as add my comments about SmackDown. So that's probably going to have to be the way it's going to be done here starting in the next few weeks. But, you know, it's going to be a work in progress and I'm going to have have to see how my schedule permits and how I'm able to work these commentaries because right now I love coming up just a few hours after Monday Night Raw because I'm on the West Coast so Raw ends for me at 8 o'clock at night so I have plenty of time to get a commentary up that evening I can usually have a commentary up before midnight my time that's pretty nice that might change now if I have to do commentaries on Wednesdays but I still think it'll be cool if I do come up and do short raw reactions late Monday nights like super short videos and then come up with a longer commentary a longer podcast on Wednesday where I discuss everything I still plan to be up here after pay-per-views and stuff like that to give my reactions on the show so none of that will change but as far as how I comment on raw and smackdown that's going to be weird to figure out here so thanks a lot WWE for fucking up good Mike works universe also Speaking of the channel, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm working on a lot of things behind the scenes. I don't really want to get into it yet because a lot of this stuff is preliminary ideas and I'm putting things together, but expect a lot of new stuff in the next three to four months on the channel. I think I'm going to debut two new series, maybe done a little bit of a different way, trying to give you guys some new content to look at, not just the same old stuff that I've been doing forever. I'll keep doing my pay-per-view and DVD reviews. Incidentally, I have mentioned uh, the pay-per-view and DVD reviews recently. I told you guys I'm way overdue on a DVD, so I asked for some of you guys to give me suggestions and recommendations. I've gotten a few. I've narrowed it down, and I think I've picked one. So I will begin working on that once we get past the draft and Battleground and all the crazy shit that's going to happen in the next week or or two. After that, I'll get to working on this DVD and put it together and get it up to you, hopefully, uh, before July ends. I also have a Q&A penciled in before the summer is over as well, so start thinking about questions to send over to goodmikework at gmail.com. If you want to send a question for the Q&A, I only do it via email, so it's not going to do you any good to leave a question in the comments or tweet me or Facebook. It is email only. I cannot stress that enough. Commentaries at gmail.com. Send over your questions, and I'll probably have a Q&A up before September. Also, another big idea that I want to start on the channel, and I've had this idea for a long time. I just don't know how to do it. Uh, I gotta start doing giveaways. You guys are so fucking awesome, and I don't think I've ever given you anything. So I need to look into the best way to do it, because if I give something away, how do you enter? How do I pick a winner? At first I was thinking, okay, everybody can email me to enter uh, the giveaway, and then I'll pick a name at random. But I'm not really sure how I can pull that off when I already have several hundred emails in my inbox as it is from everybody to go through and filter all those. I want it to be as fair as possible. So I need to look into different ways of uh, picking a winner, uh, some sort of a randomizer, put all 
all your names into a hat and draw one out. Something like that. So I'm looking into that in the next few days and expect that really soon. I will do my first giveaway, which will probably just be a DVD. As a matter of fact, I think I'll give away a brand new Scott Hall DVD, the three DVD set that just came out about a week ago. I bought a couple of copies of that with the intent of giving one away. So that will probably be the first prize uh, that I give away to you guys. And I'll try to do giveaways maybe monthly. So that's on the horizon as well. I need to get better at all that shit. Give you guys a few incentives to watch me, to listen to me, to follow me, to like my videos, all that kind of stuff. So uh, you guys have been a great group of fans for the past six years, and uh, I've decided that giveaways is something that is long overdue. So I will do some contests and shit like that in the future, and that should be a lot of fun. Once I figure out a fair and impartial way to pick a winner, I will launch that right away. Oh, one other thing I have written down. I have an apology to make to you guys in my last couple of commentaries. I think when I talked about Brock Lesnar's victory at uh, UFC, I was talking about a little bit about CM Punk. And I mentioned that he was fighting at UFC 202. A lot of you corrected me. It is not 202. It is 203. Originally, it was going to be 202, but things changed. And that's probably what it was. I heard the story when it first came out. Punk's going to fight at 202 in August. And then something changed, and I never got the memo. So I apologize for not having my facts in order as far as that goes. And I apologize for for any other little blunders like that I make because you guys all know me. I'm a very casual talker. I'm a casual observer. Every now and then I'll get a date wrong or something like that and uh, you guys are pretty quick to correct me. Uh, So thanks a lot for that. So anyway, that's it for today. I am out of here. You guys have a great rest of your week. I have an extremely busy week coming up before Monday night's Raw, so I will uh, be vocal on Twitter, but this will be the last video you get until then. So don't forget, after Monday Night Raw, anywhere from two to four hours after the show, check my YouTube channel. You should have a video up from me. And then Tuesday night after SmackDown, extremely late on Tuesday night, most likely I will have a recap and a review and a reaction of the WWE draft and where everybody ended up, along with Battle ground predictions. So leave me all your comments on Finn Balor versus Nakamura and the Cruiserweight Classic and any channel ideas you might have for me. Let's have a fun rest of the summer, fall, and winter. I will catch you guys in a few days. Until Monday night, peace.